has not allowed himself to be changed by the world. He has quadruped, dude. Like his Twitter got unbanned, and like nothing has changed since 2014. Just race uh, stuff. Just just yeah. 24 seven, and it's like, dude, it's. 8 a.m. Like, <laughs> it is 8 a.m. and you're like this He's mad close. about about black people. Uh, like, have a cup of coffee. Like, relax. Is it <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, is it veiled dog whistle stuff? No. Or is he just like. You know, uh, he's like graphs. Dude, he says MFN. His he says MFN as what you think it means, and he's he puts it right on the fucking timeline. This right, so is. When he said, this, Anthony, like, I, I haven't seen that one yet. To be clear, I haven't, <laughs> right? I haven't yeah, seen right. that yet. In fairness, but I've seen him I, I every every I'm single. Make a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. No, dude. Every like any crime across this whole country committed by a black person will be quote tweeted by Anthony Cumia <laughs> in forty five seconds. rally like close to me the other day that is no, true and i was so regretful for not having gone because i've been to one before if you've never been i highly suggest it for you it's it's amazing okay I'm yeah. good. it's oh no, they would good. love you let me tell you this wolf. <laughs> oh, let me tell you huh? this wolf they would treat you with the, oh yeah you would be like the biggest celebrity there they would all want their picture taken with you <laughs> oh, they would say that they, take, a they picture they would, take a picture they, of me who it token oh, Come, come you could be me. the guy. You could be the guy. Like, like honestly, I'm gonna be real. Bro. You're kind of being our guy right now because <laughs> I was thinking it's nice Ooh. that we've got both and Ant tonight. You got a balance. It's all safe. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that way, uh, it's like, it. look, look at this white supremacist nonsense, and then there you right. are. And they're like, "What are you talking about? I'm not even watching this clip." I don't know Holy what you're talking shit. about, Nessa. The proud guy oh, can't be racist right, right there. <laughs> um, <it's>, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the head of the proud right. boys is black, you know? and uh, the, is the Hispanic guy know, has like, a black is. wife. He's kind and of Hispanic, but you want to hear the most? Gavin the McInnes most... has an an Indian wife, and not yeah. all skin folk are kin folk. That's not all I'm saying. <laughs> you want to hear the most confusing, <laughs> uh, confusing racist moment of my life? It's when uh, in one of our hangouts that we do every month with fans um one of the black guys showed up in blackface oh, and like like he, interesting a, as a black man he painted himself with blackface and then did like the big lips and then he uh, ate right. fried chicken that was his halloween costume oh, wow and it was like old, old it was a confusing time for me <sighs> Yeah, there's the huh. out there. It's it's there's a lot of confusion out there and you got your Candace Owens and you got those I don't want to judge, but there's, you know, people grow up in certain situations and some of it is fight or flight and some of it is just program. It's, and there's no one side that's technically right. But again, back in the days, you know, you had slaves who were just happy to be in the house and chilling. Just to be clear, he was a black man. I know, I know. I'm okay. saying All back right. in the, you know, you, there've always been, you know, slaves who were happy being slaves. Oh, and they saw that they saw the positives to it. So let me ask you this: nothing you can change. Do you think there are any slaves who actually had it good? Like, like remember Samuel L. Jackson in a uh, Django? Oh, compare like, like, absolutely, that? like absolutely. Would, that's a good gig he had. Because absolutely, when you saw behind the scenes the respect that Mr. Candy had for that guy, like you, then you realize that it, it it might not even be about race anymore. It, this whole thing might be a big power play. He, he doesn't believe different skulls do different things. Like, like clearly he had. The person he respects most in the world is Samuel L. Jackson. Like when he goes behind the scenes. Yeah, but there was a lot. Like a lot of the nannies were black, and so that's why, like, oh, gone with the wind, fence. gone with the wind. There the mammy was. They was loved so much. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's always been a scenario. I think. Yeah, but, you, yeah. uh, I think you're kind of missing a little bit of the point with Sam Jackson and Leo DiCaprio and Django. There was a. Uh, definitely a barrier there there was a hierarchy that would never be, be crossed. uh, uh cross and 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 sam jackson knew he was the house boy and had to be it and and mm -hmm. um candy knew that he would cr crack his skull open if, if yeah. he crossed him but, but at the same they time, had there this, was that mutual respect right they That's had is, this yes. this but i don't but, know I, remember I, like I, I don't know do you remember, remember when scene? Candy went in the room 
And Sam was sitting in the chair. Sitting in the chair. We're drinking Mr. Candy's Drink, like drink yeah. with and his he glass. Was, exactly. He's drinking at they're drinking at the same glass. Yeah. Like think about what that there was a scene he there. was telling him what to do and saying that they were there for that girl. Yeah, that and guy. he's yeah, doing yeah. it. And he's not. And he doing wasn't it doing it, it as an underling. You need to know. You need to know, sir. Exactly. He, he, he was saying, oh, you've no, been no. Fooled. Sam Jackson's part in it had been because he had been so, that's his life. I yeah. mean, you know, his life was looking at this guy as the be all end all of his existence. Yeah. That's you a good know? fucking movie. He was, uh, but, oh, but I, I, th I think DiCaprio's character was more like, you know, Loved his dog too. Yeah. I think that's kind of how he looked at it. Absolutely, uh, he did yeah, not know yeah. yeah. We're not saying DiCaprio. We're not saying DiCaprio saw him as an equal. Yeah, yeah. By any means, but he he was still I'll a love character. I, I think yeah. that he saw him is as as much of an equal as he saw anyone in the world, though. Mm. Like, like it's not. It's not like I think he saw him above those like crazy hillbillies that lived out there and like. Yeah, uh, yeah, he in did that, in that shed. Absolutely, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. He saw that he's he was higher up than the the the, the white yeah. hunters, the like, white what, slave hunters, and those guys. So it's a little Jackson. bit different than the first plantation. Where he's like, you want me to treat him like white folks? Yeah, no, I yeah, didn't, yeah. That, that ain't what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that exactly. is not what I said. And exactly. Sam Jackson really enjoyed having that power over everyone else on the yeah. plantation. Yeah, like he was the the voice of uh leo dicaprio when he wasn't around and he knew and used and abused that power so you know again power corrupts <laughs> but again it's like there's a lot and uh, by the way uh, and the my name is wolf I hi wolf <laughs> i'm a professional paintball player so i know you've never heard of that the thing before that's a whole different story but essentially <laughs> i was also... on a team back in the uh 80s i swear no way nail spot paint pistols oh and, my uh, gosh yeah little bolt action things and go out in the woods in uh quorum where uh that's and, awesome and play, how to team the red devils it was great yeah that's amazing but yeah again um i'm i guess what you some would call a libertarian like you know i'm mm -hmm. a black guy uh, I'm a gun owner. I love Why my guns. Why didn't you tell me that before? I'm, 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 <laughs> that would have saved you a lot of embarrassing comments. There are some <laughs> people. <laughs> Jesus. This what the fuck? Oh, shit. Um, Here I was I, I, fucking I, with the contrast on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's my lighting. It's my lighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I, I, <laughs> I've had to, uh, I, I, let me tell you, um, you know, I, I'm I'm a capitalist and I love my money and I love my guns, but at the same time, there's certain things I could never do. I could never do the Republican thing, right? But mm -hmm. I could tell you that I've been offered certain positions and off and there's a lot, a lot of money in being a black Republican. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. There's a lot Hell of yeah. money in it. That's how this whole conversation began. Me telling yes, you that exactly. if you want to see a Trump rally go, because you're a a man among yeah, boys. Yeah. There. Oh, you're, I'd be up on the stage you. right beside Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are my, they, that's the other thing. I, I guarantee if you get there early, they'll be like, no, 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 sir, no, no line for you, Mister Wolf. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right this way, sir. <laughs> like, like, they're gonna put you right in there behind Trump, like between two blonde ladies. It's gonna be great. <laughs> they want your reactions, and if you play it up, you'll be a celebrity. <laughs> You'll Shoot, be at all. Like my Would you fans. like to come to Charlotte with us? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, they'll bust yeah. you around. I can no, never. I'm, I, I, I'm more of a uh, a libertarian myself when it comes. to I'm closer to libertarian than I am Republican. People think I'm like a hardcore conservative Republican. It's it couldn't be further from the truth. I like being left the fuck alone. I like making money. I like keeping as much of it as I can. I want the government out of my business. Leave me alone. Make sure whatever the government's supposed to do, do that. Leave everyone else alone with with their uh, lives. Uh, that you know, we apparently have a great opportunity to make something of in this country, and that's pretty much my stance. I I don't sit there and go like, oh, abortion. Like, I don't give a shit how many abortions somebody gets. Doesn't matter to me. I I'm not one of these you know staunch right wing every bar a part of the agenda thing. Um, I've always I just, said I don't want to be left alone. To... It should be legal to get an abortion with a suppressed machine gun that you bought at Sears. <laughs> because Sears would exist uh, in my America. Uh, uh, Sears, Sears would I still like be Sears. there. As I'm smoking weed. 
Yeah, the I'm number just... one seller of <laughs> if I'm going to shoot a baby, I want to be stoned. My dad yeah. has to buy Craftsman tools off Amazon. It has Rapper, to match the other die hard batteries, all that fun stuff. I, but I think I'm one what, of the few what's... people who's brave enough to say that, like, I'm pretty sure abortion is murder, but like, it still should be legal. Like, 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 I, I, I isn't I, that I, what I, everybody I, says? No, I, I think like most uh, pro choice, choice people are like, oh, that's that's not a life until yeah, like. Yeah. That's you name it, it, really. <laughs> you it. Did you yeah, name yeah. it yet? <laughs> You're like, a, well, no, not yet. Crying. Give it here. <laughs> there's a huge, it's not a life a huge... until it gets its 401k. <laughs> they give it the lobster treatment with the knife. Like, right oh, here. God. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. There's a huge religious uh, <laughs> aspect to the whole thing. And that really takes any um, debate out of it. It's very hard to debate pro-life and, and pro-choice because there's religion involved in the pro-life side and you never arguing with somebody to convert their religion. So they believe that that life starts at conception. There's nothing you're going to tell them that will lead them to believe, no, it starts once, you know, it's, it took its first breath of air or, but I guess there has to be a line someone draws somewhere as to when, it becomes a problem to abort a baby, or are you killing it? Like, and, and, and that's the, always been the that problem. Line, right? I think that line starts at the death penalty. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So, so, so where Anthony was like, yeah, at some point the fetus becomes viable, and you probably shouldn't kill it anymore, right? right. What's viable, right? Like, and what I think it, we all know when the baby comes out. You, you, uh, most people would go, yeah, that's a human being. You can now the day before. Because it's still in there, wouldn't that be a viable fetus? It can live on its own just as well as it does the next day. Sometimes. But, well, but that's just it. You know it when you see it. But when is that line? Because it's such a gradual gestation. Sometimes period. the heart's on the outside, or I the brain even, doesn't have uh, any yeah. skull, or like, They've you know, it, it's line. only that's alive the because it's still in utero. Right. right, trimester lines. But again, that's. That isn't religious. That's biological, yeah. and that can be that can be used in a debate about scientific content. But when you try to bring religion into it, you know people's gonna say their yeah. God believes in this, and they want you to do this, and argument over. You're never convincing them. Yeah, I don't want to debate anybody about it anyway. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I don't a, give a I'm fuck. A felon. I can't fucking vote. Don't care. It You're a anyway. felon. It's so weird when you say that. I totally forget <laughs> that you you are a fucking. <laughs> Holy shit! God. If I had to pick one felon out of these four squares, don't even do it. <laughs> don't even do it. I'm fucking Welcome to the show. We're gonna play a little game called Let's Find the Felon. Down. Oh my god! <laughs> we were just, we were just, wait, you were just walking uh, that line, brother. I <laughs> know, I know. The funny I thing say is, I'm Canadian. Shit. Oh, you're Canadian. Yeah. But I went what? to I went to university in the states, so I lived in the states for a very long time. So yeah, a and lot of people, fun, uh... another funny thing is I you know I did pre law and uh, studied uh, the uh, constitution, so I know the constitution more than most Americans do. Mm -hmm. Which is I sad. think that's that, that's pretty which is sad. Fucking important, yeah, especially if you're a a, a gun enthusiast, a gun owner. You know, a lot of states have their own stupid laws that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Kyle knows this, <laughs> but you know, you just don't want to. You want to know what the laws are. You want to know what your rights are. And yeah. so many people become these um, car window attorneys uh, when they get pulled <laughs> over. And uh, oof, dude, just Georgia, door, Georgia just shut the do door on so much of that, though. They they they, uh, they allowed for constitutional carry. Yep. So now that. it's well, it's just like my another thing. My dad he was like, "You're." Uh, your uncle's also armed himself. Um, <laughs> now that uh, oh, shit. now that now that he doesn't have to go and spend the fifteen dollars and get his picture taken, he's strapped one on. Lord and, forbid. And because uh, that's that's the other thing. Like, like oh. I personally do not. I don't think I would support the constitutional carry in Georgia because it's concealed mm. pistol carry, and they basically just told everybody, "Hey, you can do it," and they're like, "Really." Well, I've never done anything like that before, but sure, if I can, <laughs> you know, like like that's that's one hundred percent going to happen. Whereas before, yeah. there was this minor hurdle, a minor hurdle. You went to a building, you said, "Hey, I want one of those permits." They said, "Give us your thumbprint, and your picture, and fifteen dollars." We're all square, 
And it lasted, yeah. it's lasted like five years. And the best part was you don't have to get background checked. If you have one of those, you can just be boop and buy your gun. Because North is Carolina like a, has that, but they also like require a one day course. Everybody passes this course. Right, right. right. I, I happen to pass the course. The marksmanship is incredibly easy. Anyone could do it even if they hadn't operated a gun, I think. And the test was so easy. I got one question wrong, but people who got like nine wrong, <laughs> they just went up to the instructor and he's like, so on this one. What would have been like your second choice? <laughs> oh, oh, they God. did it with me. We all got hundreds. Every single oh, one shit. of us. Oh, I had wow. this dumb idea. They're like a concealed carry permit allows you to carry a knife over three inches. And I was like, well, that makes sense. Turns out it doesn't. But that was the one I got wrong. And uh, uh, But other people got a bunch wrong and every single person passed. I still like it because I didn't know like the rules for engagement. They change with the castle doctrine. Yeah. But uh, they're important to know, and they would just make sure you walked out before you got a gun. You knew them when you're yeah, allowed to shoot. I like that. There's that little hurdle. That mm -hmm, little yeah. little hurdles. Okay, I don't want. I don't like these three day waiting periods. Don't get me wrong. That's bullshit. If I want a gun, yep. I want a fucking gun now while I'm still mad. Okay, I got shit to do. <laughs> I can't wait waiting three days. I'll calm down. I I, I don't like that at all. But <laughs> a little hurdle that you've got to go and like be serious about it. And get yeah. your thumbprint taken. Like. I guarantee as soon as that went out, I mean, my uncle's an example of it. I have last time I saw him shoot, it wasn't too impressive. I think he went and got some silly pistol too. Like, like it's nonsense. Oh, no. It's nonsense. Oh, no. See, it's funny uh, because oh, no. I'm licensed. I'm licensed. I'm not licensed to carry in the States. I'm licensed in two countries. So I've had firearms in, I have, I have firearms in Canada, which yes, you can have. And I have them when I, when I'm in the States, when I'm in New York, but in New York, you know, you don't have to carry conceal. Um, in Canada, uh, yeah. depends. You have to do pretty much a two-day course for restricted, which restricted means you can uh, buy a pistol or an AR type of thing. But we just passed a law uh, that's kind of banning ARs at the moment, but we're mm -hmm. fighting it in court and stuff. So it's a little crazy. But at the same time, you don't need a gun like in Canada. Canada. Like I need a gun. In <laughs> That's for shit, sure. They man. are so. Uh, we are so close, but we're so different. It's not yep. even funny. Like I see a lot amazing. of dummies uh, on videos um, that you know get a gun, have no clue about the rules of engagement, how fluid that situation can be, and change from literally microsecond to microsecond. Where you are, you know, most grand juries. Um, uh, would would not indict you and a split second later with what you did you are completely guilty of murder like there it's so county to county. People, shoot, shoot, yeah and it changes county but, to fucking county you can literally i've seen but i've seen so many videos of people you know there's a, a recent one where guy gets in a um, altercation they have road rage altercation they hit guy gets out of his car with a bat and yes. starts hitting the guy's car now i'm looking going okay what is this guy going to do? He gets out of the car. He's got a gun. The guy with the bat kind of turns to drop the bat and run, and the guy shoots him. And then he shoots him in the back as he's running away. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Oh, that's... And then he walks over, and he yeah. shoots him in the back of the head while he's that's laying face down on the ground. No a... way. Really? Yeah. That ain't good. That ain't good. I don't get good. it. Listen, as people say, okay, yeah. Um, you have a different different size population between Canada and the states, and it, but we have the same demographics. Like you have the same these the same percentages of black to minority to you know uh, African and Canadian to what have you, right? And you have the pretty much the same cultures, but the if you look per capita, the gun violence in the states is insane. Mm. So how is it? That the two are so different, yes, it's the same. I think we well, have more guns than you. We have a and lot more it guns. It could be that simple. I'm going with better aim. We got <laughs> they have attempted gun violence and they We're just also stuck. slick with it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that the hey, scientific, I, I, the scientific. I, I, yeah. I gotta say, I mean, you look at every statistic, over half the people killed with guns in this country, it's inner cities and gang related there is something going on 
that just it will not be taken care of. Instead, you know, they keep trying to legislate against legal gun owners. You know, it's gun violence. It's this violence. It's like because they're so scared to actually address the problem. Perhaps some things need to be addressed culturally, family wise. This whole attitude of uh, and I remember when it started back in, in the 80s, pretty much where it's like, Hey, no father needed. We'll just, you know, I guess Murphy Brown was a show that was out. And Dan, <laughs> I think Dan we're the same Quayle, age. I remember that. Yeah, probably. And Dan yeah. Quayle came out and said, this is against family values. And and at the time I was looking going, yeah, that Dan Quayle's an idiot. You know, Murphy Brown, if she wants to be a, a, a single mom, it's a good thing. And And meanwhile, when you look and see how many single moms – especially in the inner cities where they don't have any other real people to to um, gravitate toward. Uh, it just becomes this cycle of gang violence. Look, when, when are 12 year olds getting shot? Poor grandma is, is sleeping in a bathtub uh, at night. And God damn, if that round don't ricochet off the shower head and nail her. <laughs> I, 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 it's so sad. Yeah. But it's but you have to understand that's also a matter of programming. Because there's a lot of people who don't know the history behind that stuff and behind the fathers not being around. Like there's a lot of Americans who don't know that the government would give you government assistant mm -hmm. assistance, but only if there was no father in the picture. Yeah, yeah. So they that encouraged that certain lifestyle. And and you know what I, I mean? I think yep. there's a difference between like, mm -hmm. I, is a divorced mom a single mom? I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a she's raising like, we'll kids said alone. Some, we'll, not necessarily. They, they, oftentimes they co-parent. The kids go back and forth from house to house. Because we'll oh, say oh, I got father's you. not around. And that's, that's like – right. There's a huge difference, I think, between not having a father yes. figure at all and parents being divorced. Like, But there's other people well. that can come in. Look, I, I my parents got oh. divorced when I was probably – 11 12 years mm -hmm. old my dad moved out to california i did go out there and see him and i lived out there for a little while but for the most part there was this my uncle tony you know my my brother being just a little older than me uh re other relatives neighbors there was this community thing where you you had adult men teaching you and going like whether it was you know it wasn't this sit down and hey, now I'm going to teach you something. It was maybe sometimes it was just a backhand and go don't be a friggin' asshole. What are you <laughs> stupid? Don't yeah. do that again. You friggin' you stupid like that. But but just having that in there shame was another thing. Like you do something stupid and to have my uncle Tony just go like what are you doing? Come on, Anthony. <laughs> what? And you'd go like, oh, fuck, I'm an idiot. Like that has some fucking equity in how a person grows up. Yeah. And, and I think a lack into, of that. You have yeah. to take into account uh, nature and nurture and you have to take into account cause and effect and things like the neighborhood that you grew up in to have those influences were sure. much different than certain black neighborhoods. And then you have to go, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And it's like, well, yeah, you do have to ask, like, why is that? There's, and... there's a difference between, like, for instance, um, I was, uh, my dad wasn't around. My dad took off when I was five. My mom raised three boys. And my mom was an accountant, worked her butt off. And, you know, we I grew up in a, a nice uh, uh, suburban neighborhood. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Turned out pretty good. Went to university, yada, yada, yada. But if I grew up, but. In the states, the chances are much higher of being in a not so nice neighborhood. Right. And so, if you're surrounded by that nurture, it's a matter of survival. That you know, you want to go, you want to do good in school, and you want to do this and everything. But if you're walking and you got to pass by drug dealers every morning who are telling you, "Listen, if you don't join us, we're gonna mm -hmm. destroy you. Forget those school books. Come and sell for us." It's a little harder to survive in that environment and make it through all the way. Oh, sure. That's a tough fucking situation. And and to try to come up with some resolution is nearly impossible because I think a lot of people have a lot of different ideas as to what the solution to that would be. Some people think more money to education. Some people think more government intervention, restrictions, whatever it is. I, I, I still, you know, maybe it's my age. I still think that fucking smack to the head by someone <laughs> and don't be stupid and, and, and making you feel like yeah, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's tempting. Wow, I can make a shitload of money or work really hard and do this. Yeah, I'm in a bad situation. The neighborhood sucks. This sucks. But I got to friggin' stay on this path, 
you know, we all did stupid shit. I get that part, but my stupid shit would never equate to at 12 year old, years old carjacking someone with a gun. Like, like something has to be done to address that before you could even start fixing it. And I think mm. people are so fixated on, you know, hey, great. More people dead in the city. Let's take legal guns away from from legal law-abiding citizens. Uh, that's got to stop. The excuses from the left and the right have to fucking stop. Let's. The last you know, two big shootings were in the two states with the most gun. The control. most gun control. Most gun control. It's yeah. it's bizarre. When I heard Mayor uh, Mayor Adams here in New York City, uh, Eric Adams, he's been mayor for uh, since January. Useless. And he's talking about ghost guns, and you know. Ghost guns this, ghost guns that. It's like we got to have a law against banning ghost guns. It's already banned in New York. Yeah. New York City, <laughs> you can't have a slingshot. Never mind. It's like you're going to walk around New York City and, and go to NYPD and go, ha, ha, I made it myself. Can't do anything. It's a gun. It's, it slings projectiles by burning gunpowder. It's illegal already. And by the yeah. way, the point zero 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 one percent of ghost guns that are being used in in crimes in New York City, uh, it, it's inconsequential. These are all stolen guns, uh, e even straw man purchases, things like that. Regardless, the people using the guns are not legal gun owners. They don't have license, and the guns are not registered to them. So, what friggin' laws are you gonna legislate against legal gun owners that are gonna help end? The problem with the violence. I, you and I probably line up word for word on guns. Uh, maybe not every issue, but guns for sure. It, it it seems there are already laws against doing all the things you don't want people to do. It's yeah. illegal to shoot people, right? So <laughs> already, <laughs> we're, like we've got the big one covered. You don't have to make it illegal to own the thing to shoot people because that right. only impacts people who own the thing and don't shoot people. People who own the thing and shoot, which is the vast are, majority. They ignore laws in the first place. Yeah. Know, yeah. Another law isn't going to be the issue. But Never. you have to. But at the same time, like I grew up, I lived in New York during the Dinkins years, right? And oh, okay. Dave. Yeah. There was, <laughs> and <laughs> was there, awesome. the, the gun crime was insane. Oh, crazy. So some of these laws actually brought the gun crime down. It did, did work to an extent in New York. And I'm telling you, it did work. Are you and sure it's again, the cause and effect, though? Right? Like, like are you sure no, no, it wasn't like the you economic? Not want to be, when the big laws went through, you did not want to be caught with a gun in your car in New York. But after crime a went point. down outside of New York. Economic pr prosperity from like the eighties to twenty twenty just had a yeah, lower no, no, no. crime New, rates. New York is its, all New York, over America. New York is its own universe. Right. Well, I it's mean, a universe that seems if, to follow the same if, rules as the rest of it. No, it doesn't. It know. is strange. It in is different. It's rates. very different. Its because police it's, department is literally like an army. They have a, a bigger yeah. police department than, than countries have armies. And and budget-wise, right. And it's it's the, the pinnacle of the free world, tourism, all this shit. Security really has to be crazy. The transportation systems just blow away have any other They have their own city. police. Yeah, yeah, they have their own police. The thing is, now after Dinkins, Port Authority, when, all those guys. when Giuliani came in, he was right up until September 11th. Giuliani was one of the most hated mayors of New York. Hated. September yeah. 11th, it was like, America's mayor. We <laughs> love Giuliani. But everyone forgets before that, people hated him. He was yeah. shutting down all the fun porn shops on 42nd yep. Street and now Times Square. All did. the bodegas <laughs> are closed. Oh, everything. The bodegas it was, it was terrible. Clubs. But, but he and he also did something, and he was called racist for doing it. It was called the um, the broken, broken window. Yes, where where cops would look away at, at a lot of shit over the course of the years. And he said, "Look, if we pay attention to the turnstile jumping and the broken windows, and and try to find out who's doing that, it will lead us to get bigger." arrests for bigger crimes and that's why when people knew if they were walking around with a gun there was a really good chance that they could just be stop and frisk, and frisk. stop yep. and frisk was terrible they hated it but it was you didn't leave the house with a gun because you knew you didn't even have to use it you might just go hey buddy let me see what you got there oh it's a gun boom a year two years in rikers broken so, windows is tricky for me because like I know. People who agree with broken windows are considered racist, which puts yeah. me in a weird spot because it makes sense to me. I feel like I followed it myself. So I'll lay it out there for people who've never heard of this. 
you see an apartment building. It's vacant, but it looks nice. The paint is still fresh and the windows are unbroken and you don't tend to throw a rock through the broken even though no i'm sorry you don't tend to throw a rock through the window even though no one lives there once there's one broken window mm-hmm. once there's one broken window now this yeah. place looks like a target you can break the rest of the windows you can yeah. go in there as soon as there's a broken window it's a it's a wreck we would see like um this is me in high school as an idiot remember the idiot let's let's just lay that out there let's admit to that uh, uh cars uh, we never broke into cars. We didn't fuck with cars. No, that was no, somebody's no. car, right? But in Ocean City, if a car said they're too long, it would get an abandoned tag under the um, windshield wiper. And that meant it was ours. <laughs> like, yeah. That meant that we could <laughs> fuck with it. We could push it. A bunch of guys could like bounce it and make it sit perpendicular to the curb. That was mm-hmm. the thing we would do a lot if it was small. We found yeah. one that you could start without a key. Like If it had an abandoned tag... It was like a broken window. Right. Suddenly, yeah. assholes like me would fuck with that car who would never fuck with a car that didn't have one. But, like broken windows, it's called racist, but I'm like, I feel like it. it's right, right? Like you don't. Hey, fuck but with- for you, it worked. But for me, the college kid who just liked to hang out in the city on the weekends and go to nightclubs and stuff, getting stopped and frisked for no reason was hell. Like I was, there, you know, I yep. was studying pre law. And I was like, you know, I was, I, I wanted to be a lawyer, all that stuff, and I'd go to the house music clubs and the weekends and stuff. And you to get harassed for no reason by the police was hell. And you gain that resentment over and over again. And I even be driving with a car with Ontario plates on it, and they'd still stop and harass us for no, no reason. Here's a situation where when you're close but, to hold it, on, sorry, can- one more point, one more point. Mm-hmm. It, and a lot of people would say, and the, one of the hor- most horrible arguments was, mm. hey, if you didn't do anything, you shouldn't have to be worried, right. which is not how the law should work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a, a, a fine line between um, infringing on people's liberties and, and um, Fourth Amendment rights uh, and keeping, keeping the city safe. I mean, again, yesterday... Uh, or today it was, Mayor Adams comes out and says, he goes, look, something's got to stop. He goes, there were, by the way, there was the subway shooting that we had here a couple of days ago. A guy goes into the subway, throws some smoke bombs, for some reason shoots everyone in the legs. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. I think he got this spatial disorientation from the smoke. He, had he the thought aim he of was Canadian. going like this, but he was shooting down. Like some people get that in planes and they fly the plane right into the ground because they Thank can't goodness. see the horizon. If it was so smoky and had a gas mask on, you know, I've done that in video games where I'm going, ah, yeah. ah, <laughs> ah, ah. you know, what the hell's going on? But uh, so after that happened, the next day, 13 shootings, two uh, deaths uh, in New York City. So the mayor comes out and says, he goes, look, and this is the first time I've really heard someone say this. He goes, look. Every one of these victims was black. Every single one. I spent all this time in the Bronx and and Brooklyn uh, today. And he goes, where's Black Lives Matter? Where's Black Lives Matter? Because these young kids are being killed in these communities. And he goes, what, their lives don't matter? And I've heard people say that ad nauseum, usually white dudes on social media. And everyone goes, oh, shut up. It's racist. Uh, TV. But to see Mayor Adams say this, I it, it got my attention. I was like, oh, fuck. He's addressing the community like, what the fuck? Sm- what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing, asshole? And, and giving the smack in the head. I, it was refreshing to see. Because I think part of it is because it's confusing for a lot of people because it, it, and it's it, it's hard unless you're in that situation because Black Lives Matter is was made to protect people from those who were supposed to be protecting them mm-hmm. because theoretically there should be no term as black on black crime because you don't hear you you never hear the phrase white on right why do you never hear the phrase white on white crime. Mm-hmm. When that's the majority of the crime that happens, right? So the black on black, white on white, it's an interracial thing. What the Black Lives Matter thing is, is to stop those who are supposed to be protecting us from killing us, mm-hmm. right? And we've even had, I've I've marched for that in the States and I've marched for that in Toronto too, because uh, 
we've had the same situation as Toronto, but nowhere close like the States. Like our police yeah. officers are ridiculously educated in Toronto. So shout out to them. But we've had situations like that, and but they've gotten a lot better. But that's why it black, it's not Black Lives Matter job to deal with black on black crime, because black on black crime is the same as white on white crime. And it's, it's it's a paradox that a lot of people can't figure out. And it, it that's a very general way to try and say it. Don't they bring it up because, like, uh, so the, you know, there's so many more. There's a lot more white people, right? Like, aren't black people like a small minority who are... There's a per capita. It's something, something like, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, a, yeah. it's a combination Percentages. of that, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like, you know, with their purpose is to stop the officials from killing black people for no reason. Because if I'm just, you know... Oh, the cops are the some, worst. If some idiot's just running away because That's the whole license, thing. they're not getting license, sympathy out of Kyle. No, no yeah, Kyle's you not. should not. You should not be <laughs> getting shot in the back of the head because of a taser. You know what I mean? So that's oh. what it's about. Oh, I, I you're not going to find a, a more staunch ally than I when it comes to the police, my friend. Oh, I know. Brother. <laughs> now, I, I, know. I, I did see that video today, and. Uh, you know, obviously, an investigation has to, it, as in every shooting, has to go yeah. down. Um, but when I see but for, hold on. Benjamin, before you say something, uh, okay, go ahead. The police sure. should not. Uh, the bad thing about the states is that they don't have a third party to rule over these things. So mm -hmm. in Toronto, you have a whole different organization that is not connected to the police, who judges whether there's a good shooting or not. Right? Yeah. The police do not judge. The police do not police the police in. Uh, Toronto or Canada, you have different parties to do that, who are okay. who are unbiased. Well, well, mm. the investigation, it does go to a grand jury if it's deemed to be a, a bad yeah. shooting, and it's then they they take over. Um, it's very hard these days for people to kind of get away with uh, things that probably were were a lot more commonplace years ago grand because of jury cameras and whatnot. Who deems it a bad shooting? Uh, well, the grand jury would. Well, the the grand jury oh, would take it, you How does it get to the grand jury? You're going to need saying. a DA to get involved. It sounded like if the cops decide it's a bad shooting, then it goes to the grand jury. Maybe I misunderstood. Oh, no, no, no. They they could no. do their own investigation, but a, a co the cops also, the internal police department investigation, can't just say, well, that's fine, and then the district attorney goes, well, the cops said it was okay. Like, if, if they... It but feels like that most that, of the that's time. That's how it happens. Most though. of the time... It, like, <laughs> so I, I'm not an expert on the topic, but it seems like most of the time, the cops are like, well, we don't really love it, but they were kind of in line with department policy. Well, well here's... But there's two ways that could go. Okay. It's a horribly corrupt, racist uh, uh, department, or there's a lot of good shootings that people are have grave misconceptions about how they happened because of bullshit social media and bullshit mainstream media. So, you know, I've seen so many cases, so many cases where people had a complete lack of information about a, a shooting. You, you, I, I watched the trials in their entirety, and then when the verdict comes out in favor of, of the officer, because everyone heard bullshit, they go, oh, black man can't use his blinker? Like, if he comes, <laughs> if he comes out, I was like, yeah, he used a blinker. He hit it with his gun as he was shooting at the cop. It, it, just, it just, it seems like a lot of people, and I'll, I will, I will even, I'll even say on both sides that there's a lot of people so uneducated uh, of of a certain situation. I mean, there are people like Benjamin Crum. He comes out anytime there's a police shooting of a black man, and he will instantly. And he came out on this taser thing, instantly say. Uh, and I saw his post, his personal post on Twitter before anything was looked into. Unarmed black man shot in the back of the head. Uh, w w was not. Uh, uh, committing any violence against the officer. What's I'm the like, taser Holy thing? Shit. Is there a new one? Or yeah, is this we have the one yeah, right? yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah, this is uh, uh, a guy gets uh, pulled over. He had a plate on the back of his car that did not match the car. So okay. the officer pulls him over. He gets out of his car before the officer even gets near his car. The officer goes, back in your vehicle, back in your vehicle. He also has a passenger in the passenger seat, another gentleman in the passenger seat. The guy didn't get back in the car. The cop continues to walk over. He goes, okay, license. 
uh, the guy just stands there looking at him and he goes, what did I do? What did I do? The guy goes, do you have a license? Let me see your license. This was very, you know, it went back and forth. It was very tense right from the beginning. So the guy decides at some moment he's going to run because <laughs> the officer says, you know, turn around. Uh, he wasn't complying with the uh, orders to show ID. He kept asking, what's the matter? He goes, this plate does not fit the car. Guy takes off. They get into a, a physical altercation on the lawn. Um, of a house that they were pulled over near. The cop pulls out his taser, hits the guy with the taser after they're struggling for a little while. Uh, it doesn't seem to do much. I don't know what that's all about, but Sometimes. I've seen it happen. Yeah. So Taser's now the cop's 50. holding the taser. He's telling him, stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting. Uh, they, they get on their feet a couple of times, then they're back on the ground. Now the guy grabs the cop's the hand with the taser, and he starts grabbing toward the taser. And now the cop's yelling, let go of the taser, let go of the taser. Uh, now, also, I want people to understand, uh, a taser fires the prongs out, and at a distance, you can zap some somebody. After you fire that, it becomes a stun gun. You can literally hit mm -hmm. someone with it, pull the trigger, and it becomes a, a stun gun type taser. So it's some not, it's not, the and ones these ones do. Yeah, yeah the, the, the ones the cop was it's using. It's X26. Do. Yeah. He, he, so. The guy finally got possession of the taser. The guy being when, bad the, guy. The, the, the perpetrator there or whatever, the victim, right. depending on how you wanna how you wanna look at it. The cop immediately pulls his gun, boom, shoots him in the back of the head. Because he oh. had the taser in his position. Yeah, they'll now, do that. now again, an investigation needs to be done. But I will tell you one thing, Benjamin Crumb's synopsis of that was nowhere near right. accurate when he said unarmed, uh, peaceful, nonviolent cop does this. And again, it's based on nothing but his – the race baiting that guy does. And it's all for profit. I, I see him as the new millennium's uh, Al Sharpton or uh, something like that. But I've seen that before. Uh, it needs yeah. to be investigated, obviously. Oh, I but mean, to like, instantly say, oh, here's another racist, murderous cop. Because right. look, you're, you're – even though if you hate cops, this guy is doing his job and lives can be destroyed by bullshit on either side. Uh, whether it's the victim, the perpetrator, the cop, the victim, the perpetrator. Lives can be destroyed. Uh, and and, and uh, we've seen a wake of destroyed lives when shit like this happens. So it's best to sit back and wait and see what the fuck the real information is. Yeah, if he got, I mean, if he did get possession of the taser, then they're going to call it a good shooting. They always do. Um, but it, I, I've seen, I've, I've watched. Uh, do you ever say, have you ever seen the Police Activity YouTube channel? Oh Jesus! Well, no. let me just go ahead and say you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> you're, what you're going to want to do is watch the whole playlist in order later on, and, and have a couple drinks, and you're going to have some laughs. You're going to cry. You're gonna, you're gonna cheer. You're going to oh, be afraid Jesus. because it's literally nothing but body cam footage. And the, mm -hmm. that channel will edit together five different officers' perspectives. Oh, make, right. Yeah. And make you a fucking movie out of some of these <laughs> crazy – and, and, and it, it'll be such crazy shit that you're like, how have I never heard of the West Dallas shootout? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. this, this, Tombstone is pussy shit compared to the stuff that goes down on the daily and is uploaded on that channel. I, but crazy. My favorite – my favorite crazy like action movie type moment that I saw was a guy took a hostage with a knife, and as soon as the cop like approached and saw that, he shot the guy in the face. Oh God! Yeah, like, yeah. Threw down, shot bad guy in the face, and as bad guy is falling, very much dead again in the face. Yeah, and you see a little bit of his Damn. brain come out. It's spittle. Yeah, spittle. Like it's it's just had, uh... He it was in a little shed type shed. thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what, he had remember the... what his partner said? Nice. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I remember that now. Oh, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. Here's the oh, best part about that video. That now. Yeah, that, yeah. Like the, the cop didn't catch it, and I, most of the people in the YouTube comments didn't either. The poor, like I think he was a Sikh guy. He had the beard, maybe the turban too. Um, that was had been taken hostage. Pissed himself. So oh, yeah. that's why he's being weird at the end. He's trying to like hide that he's yep. pissed his pants. Yeah, I remember that. Shit. I don't blame him. Hey, I don't <laughs> tagged either. him in the face, and then he tagged the moving, uh, moving yeah, yeah. target. Yeah, yeah. double tapped the him. side. Yeah. That's some yeah. fucking and... Kyle Rittenhouse marksmanship right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, impressive. Kyle Rittenhouse, <laughs> dude. That Kyle Rittenhouse kid. Like, like, say what you want, but like, 
that first of all, he had a great, great lawyer. I love that. I, I, I don't oh, know if you've yeah, seen yeah. the excerpt. You, I Kyle know Rittenhouse should not have been there to begin with. Agreed. Everybody <laughs> agrees on that. Shouldn't have been Everybody there agrees be. on that, Wolf. Who but, drives their teenager to a riot filled? Like, I have a, a child the same drive age. There? His yeah. mom dried him there, dro drove him there. Like, I, I, I have, know that detail. Okay. If, if there were, uh, if I was in the suburbs and there were protests and fires and stuff going on, I would not drive my teenager down there to hang out with my AR-15. And that's why your son will never be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No one will remember your name. I'm proud. <laughs> no, that was uh <laughs> Zach said he drove himself, our producer. I I didn't He I traveled to there and look every I had this exact conversation with my father two days ago and, and, and he was like he had never heard the story. He says he doesn't watch bullshit news. He didn't even know about Kyle Rittenhouse. He's like, wow. why the fuck was he there with a rifle? Why the fuck was he there at all? And I'm like, those are good points. Yeah. Okay. But what regardless cool of when the guy tried there. to shoot him, he shot the guy's bicep on his shooting hand. And I choose to believe it was intentional. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. I think that was luck. I, I think oh, really? that it was intentional. Yeah, I do. I, I think fired like was, four the shots, got falling, three kills. Uh oh. The way he was falling. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think he had a miss. That's not hard with kill. a two, two, three. Come on now. He I didn't just have a think miss. Nobody way, else hit him. When I saw him falling back, and he, the way, just the way his gun was pointed, I think that was pure luck. I, the, the other oh, two God. shots, the other two shots, okay, fine. But the the bicep shot, I think that was pure coincidence. <laughs> and well, I shot my I, came apart. I shot. Well, the human body will do that, but oh, um, yeah. I it shot runs. my fair share of stuff. But regardless, though, like, good shot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I like, I like shit. how they had coached that witness too. Like, like so at that point he shot you in the bicep. No, no, no. At that point he destroyed my bicep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, like he looks at like the prosecutor, like, did I do good, boss? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you did good, but yeah, you're about to destroy. lose the whole fucking case. So I'll give you three thirty. Yeah, minutes. yeah. He was not a good witness. <laughs> did he lose he that arm? Not make a good witness, man. Uh, he's got the arm, but I. There's no way he could do shit like this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they. <laughs> yeah. I think Full they took some. Sucks. They took some. Uh, <laughs> Some uh, thigh muscle, and they moved and it tried to that. rebuild oh. some shit in his arm. See They're again, that's amazing that's these Woody. days. Woody, would you do that? Would you take muscle from one of your like genetically predisposed good regions and throw it on like your weak point if you could? Uh, then I wouldn't have any more good regions. I don't know. This no, no, no. Right. You could create a new good region. Like, do you? Want, Woody, like, uh, what he's shit? asking, what would he's what he's asking is, would you get a BBL done? No, no, no. Take, take, <laughs> I want you to take like a chicken cutlet size slice out of each calf. <laughs> chicken cutlet. Each calf, and it just goes yeah. on your delts now. Oh, wow. You've got a fourth delt muscle. I think I would do that, yeah. That's like a video yeah. game attribute slider. You know? <laughs> I was oh, going to say, you exactly. Go. Yeah, you're, right? you're, just, you're just taking it from one, and you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Can I just, just take points off of intelligence? Absurd. I don't use it anyway. What are you going to do? I tell dick jokes charisma? on the internet. I what can't have bigger I need to boost my charisma. <laughs> Woody, Woody, see, they don't understand, Woody. The character uh, is already a, 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 an oddly maxed out character. I think they need to see the calves. Oh my god, like right now? I mean, <laughs> I would like to see the calves. Let me see what I can do. Hold on. It's going to be worth the wait. Oh. Oh shit. You're going to stand up and I can see him right there. You can already see like what's I coming. I can see the Oh my god. You can already see what's coming. Like like he's got plenty of calf to lose. Like like he could take a little of this, throw it on the delt. A little of that, throw, throw it the somewhere else. Or something. Look how oh my it. god. Oh, Whoa. Oh, my god. oh, look at that. And there he Acrobatic goes. Acrobatic as well. <laughs> oh. Acrobatic oh, as well. That's what, happen when you, that's what happens when your legs are landing gear. Oh my god, look <laughs> at that. This is perfect. This is he perfect. Has this is a paraglider. Para oh my gosh. Pistol squat, pistol squat. Jesus. Like Jesus. bowling pins. Oh. <laughs> Damn. House way, how? <laughs> yeah. Ah, shit. Like a man Look at that guy. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah. when, uh, yeah, his legs are landing gear, so he, uh, yeah. he's got to land, he's gotta land with those things. <laughs> Woody would look good. At, Woody, you'd look good on a real good in a pair of heels, like a you know, <laughs> oh my, yeah, a pair of red yeah. bottoms. Yeah, <laughs> um, Louboutins. Louboutins, exactly. <laughs>
Sorry, I, I think Anthony Kumi is coming soon, and it's yeah, distracting I'm, I'm me. Yeah, I'm taking care of it. Kyle's <laughs> taking care of it, but my computer's beeping in my ears, and I can't, I can't form a thought. <laughs> You're going to want to put streaming mode on your Discord. <laughs> that's a thing. And that'll never beep at you again. That, Dude, that bitch hasn't beeped into... at me in a, in a, a long age. time. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> that's what you almost said, I know. Woody's it. got no chill. He's got no chill. <laughs> I, we got what does that even refer to? Time. I always I thought know. that meant well, raccoon. It does. You said, you said yeah. something last time that a whole bunch of people got upset. I, I will comments. never get over the very shit I and said. And I and I told them like, dudes, chill. Like, Jesus. <laughs> like, oh my god. If I'm not taking uh, shit personal, you guys got to relax. It's all <laughs> we're all family. All. I it's appreciate all good, it. Bro. Coon's age means a very long time. It is an Americanism that has fallen out of favor and is considered offensive by mental people. I didn't know get that. Coon is slang for raccoon, coined in the mid-1700s. A coon's age was first used in the 1800s. In fact, it owes its origin to the to the folk belief that raccoons are long-lived. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think it also, so but it also had an alternative thing where um, people of a certain background in America were thought of as criminals because of the raccoon's Oh uh, yeah, know, they, you know, so one of those like hamburger disguises. Yeah, yeah. I still don't they see that they refer to certain raccoons have those blacked out eyes, like as their fur yeah. markings. But I don't see how that. Well, it goes back to they called you know, robbers coons, and then they cut they they made black black people are robbers, of course, according yeah, well, to the, some people. And, do we really and, have to spell this out for you, bro? Like, yes, come we on, really bro. do. I totally <laughs> don't even get it. I'm like, He's how does not this kidding? I. Ha <laughs> <laughs> How does this get to period of time? I don't understand. I'm trying to be sensitive here. I don't know. That's why I did it quickly like a band aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, don't be calling the brothers that on a, on a yeah. nice no, day. Yes. I mean, I heard it uh, for the first time, I think, from like one of those old timey like westerns or something like that. Mm. And the character definitely meant a raccoon because they were like eating frog legs and possums and shit in the woods. Like, like okay. So uh, that's how I mean it when I say it. I a funny <laughs> little uh, colloquialism or whatever, and uh, totally it understandable. Doesn't, it doesn't make a fuck. You are not. You're not offended anyway because you're not yeah. a baby like some people. Um, but at some time, you, you still got to be careful. You know. I think it's more certain... important. Man, I, I wish it was more about like what's in the person's heart, but I guess you can't know that all the time. But it's never. Well, that's the thing, right? And it's I've got like, a pretty. And we're not having a private conversation anyway, so it's exactly, weird yeah. Too, you know? And it's it's funny because you know um, I've seen a lot of like I've seen. I could tell you a story. We could talk for days about the racist stuff that happens. Like I could tell you that, you know, I used to have to send my wife to buy property because my ex was white. Yeah. So I would have to send her to buy certain properties because they wouldn't sell to black people. Of course. And yeah. there's nothing oh. I could do about it. And now that like a real, like this is like happens to me every single day. Like I was at the Range, Ro Range Rover dealership like two days ago and some guy asked me to go fetch his car from. Oh, dear. Like huh. it's and this is a con so when you hear you know oh. there's some guys out there are like oh, hey what do you hang, have to make right, everything about hang race yeah. what were you wearing at the Range Rover dealership? I was wearing uh, Lacoste running shoes. I was wearing uh, jeans, and I was all right, wearing all right, the a jeans. Polo. Like, all right, why does he think you're fucking working in jeans? What I was I thinking know. is like if you were like ah oh, you know I have. I was dressed like a porter, you know, like white button up shirt, some khakis and some black, black, black shoes on. No, I know. Well, what Kyle was saying I, used to happen to me all the time. So when I'm I was trying to give young, him some kind of an excuse, I was like 19 <laughs> or 20 and I worked as a junior well, a white man at my dad's firm. <laughs> and because I, the job required a, a tie and a button down shirt. And I was so proud of myself. Now I worked for my dad. I shouldn't have been proud of myself, but I, in my head felt like I was, I'm sorry. Can I interject? Yeah. I know a little bit about your father's standards. You should have been very proud. That <laughs> he, you know that if you had, if you if you were if you had not been able to cut it, you wouldn't have had that job. You know right. that. Okay. Thank Nothing you. wrong with there's nepotism, some, brother. You should be proud that your father that. thought you had it and and invited you into his business he and would. then pawn you off to some competitor. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> I sent him over there to work for Dave across the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, I worked oh, for a client. Proud to have you work for him. That's it. But um, but yeah, you're right. Actually, if I was doing embarrass him, he would have never hired me. But anyway. The job required me to dress nice, shirt, tie, like like a junior accountant back in the day. I was proud of myself because I felt like I had my shit together at a young age. Every time I'd go like grocery shopping, I'm like, I bet all these people think, well, that young man really has his act together. What they actually thought, where's the bread? Can you help me find this? They always thought I was a retail employee yeah. because I was dressed nice. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Every time. When, I, when I was when I was like 19, but one of the 
one of those cringy and like confident shattering moments uh, <laughs> as a salesman early on was a pro well you know a greeting a guy at the door and be like hey i'm kyle welcome to team ford how can i help you or like or like i don't remember the exact spiel but something like that and being and be like what are you a greeter <laughs> 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 and i i remember thinking like I could take you, old man. <laughs> I'm the assassin, mother trucker. <laughs> you bitch. You bitch. I'm not See, there's a there's a big there's a kind of a I don't know if you call it a fallacy or what have you, but is there always a thing where people will I will tell certain people about certain situations and they're like, "Hey, that happened to me, but it had nothing to do with it because I was black. It happened because you know I had tattoos or mm -hmm. I had a long beard." And I go, "There is a difference, and that's part of the thing is that you can't." when you see it from my eyes, then you understand it because, you know, you can shave off that beard or hide those tattoos and then that problem wouldn't occur. Yeah. Whereas I can't do that. You know what I mean? And I, it's I mean, like, you try to teach people, but it's unless you're like, again, m my ex is white. She could tell you stories for days about, you know, getting pulled over and them seeing her. And then you know, like, it, like, you have to experience it. And uh, otherwise it's very hard to comprehend. No, I believe it's true. I've I've seen plenty of videos. I obviously haven't lived it, but but I believe everything you're saying. And I know mm. it's true. Um, and I'm like, and I'm very, you know, I'm very well spoken, educated, yada yada yada. And I know that you know, I I I you know, I took law, pre law in university. So if the cop tried to give me a hard time, I'd know the right things to say and to make them worried about their jobs, opposed to me worried about living. You know what I mean? And so there are a few. There are a few phrases and euphemisms that are used that are to politely describe a black man, and well, <laughs> and, and, and well spoken is one of them. And I was surprised to hear you use it because, like, I'm I, when I hear that, that's a little bit of a dog whistle to me. Mm. Like, like I, Joe Biden used to do that stuff to Obama when he was running for president. He oh, yeah, articulate. oh, well, oh, he's so articulate. He called it's, him it's articulate. Like, you don't yeah. sound black. I was like, what? Oh, you, and and clearly, this. what Joe Biden, whether you like it or not, meant it. Is he's very articulate for a black man. That's what he means. He'd have never said that about fucking Bob Dolers no. or, 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 or Bill Clinton. He would, oh, yeah, he's well spoken. Right. He's articulate. Like, yeah. What do you mean? He speaks as well as like the other 50 guys who graduated from right. Yale that from if his Obama class, was like, a white Jewish guy, he wouldn't be like, you know, he speaks pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, brother. That's but, a whole different kind of racism, though. That's but again, Obama's been, he's, used to that and he's been used to that his entire life and he's used to hearing it so it's like there's a point where you just got to choose your battles right and you're like ah, whatever you know what i mean like yeah. we could if i if i yelled at every bro i'm a professional paintball player which is like one of the most redneck sports that that exists and it's like but i'm very blessed because i never experienced any racism in the game that's why i love the game so much like, ever? i never didn't have oh. any problems, any issues at a game. Well, you play video games. I bet you find it there. <laughs> 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 You're not making that it through a model. Call of Duty lobby <laughs> is no joke. <laughs> Jesus, Murphy. I mean, it's calmed down a bit. Like, Warzone is not as bad as it used to, but they, you know, okay. they enabled a lot of ways for you to get people booted, right? But back in the old days, um, you guys know how crazy it was. Like, oh it my was, god, it was. I mean, and we were as guilty as anybody. I, I, I don't think I said some of the more horrific things, but like we get in those. I'd get in those petty arguments with little children on the internet, and I was like 20, oh. 25 years old. Like, like, like <laughs> you know, like, like, and I was. I did it last me. night. I don't care what you're talking Not about. Me. I, I was a YouTuber almost from the get go, and my Xbox gamer tag was Woody's gamer tag. There was no hiding in there. I was, mm. you know, I was always polite. I just, I stood behind what I said because it was always just like <laughs> shit talking. It, it was, oh, they would okay. be mad. They would be complaining about our tactics or whatever. When we're mm. on, like, like, you know, we were so try hard. We were probably on like a fifty game win streak every night or something mm -hmm. like that. And, it, and and I was just like, it doesn't matter what we do. We will always be better than you. <laughs> <laughs> we can do anything we want. You can try as hard as you want, and you'll never beat us. Stay right where you are. We love it. We favorite. love it. <laughs> and, just like, and then just mute them all and just pl play against them all night. I was from this school of thought too. I think anything that has happened historically in this country should be available for people to see Absolutely. and debate and talk about and know that we went through some very difficult times where a lot of mistakes were made. And totally statues, statues were erected to people that weren't the fucking greatest people. But <laughs> yes. to rip it down 
almost is counterproductive. You want to go up and go, hey, let me read this plaque. Who's this guy? Wow. That guy, maybe I'll read up more on this one. Holy shit, what a piece of shit this guy was. And and not only that, a lot Hitler of these statues, statues were built in the 30s <laughs> when then you, you get another whole line of why during this time, what was going on in the country where they felt they needed to pay tribute to these uh, soldiers? Like there's so much education. You that, will not and, and find and any statues right. of these the statues S are... in Germany. Right. These statues are Confederate soldiers, right? The, the guys who were fighting to keep slaves in right. heroic yes. exactly. poses, typically. And these plaques you see under them rarely say, this was a total dick bag. Exactly. Um, no, they're like, these are the, the heroic... What, right, right. I, I no, just don't <laughs> think any history should be eliminated. It talks it's about the sacrifices they made. It talks I, I about like how brave they are, enough. how long they marched, how hard they fought. I like, would like it, to think it, we're smart enough to be able to look at stuff in context and go, and not go, let's get rid of it let's go wow why but why we're in 1930 we're not did they decide to put so we're gonna we're gonna assess who's smart enough and who's not smart enough to handle reality and when they, we decide that certain people can't we eliminate the whole thing for anybody? Removing yeah, a statue really is not eliminating it. I'm not. No, no, I'm not. I'm, Removing no, I mean, the, statue. the statues do. And they were put up there by people who, and that was their intent. Right? Yes. You know, the, the daughters of the Confederates the were not trying to prove the bad things that their family did. Exactly. They, they were there to create these heroic Again, monuments. Again, isn't that people. a context? Isn't that a context that needs to be looked into? And, and you could actually use that and say... Wow, we had organizations in the 30s that that put these statues up. Why yeah. did that happen so long but after they put it the in war? the center then, square of Raleigh, North Carolina, where I live, on top yeah. of these pedestals? And and I tell you, they look like heroes when you look at it. Exactly. They put them in front of courthouses. They they're not like exposing our dirty history so we can remember what we did wrong. That's not what these statues do. But in they the slightest. could now. They were put there fucking. A hundred years You'd ago. You'd have to put a different statue there if you wanted to fulfill exactly. that goal. These people look amazing. No, not fulfill that goal. You need it to look like it did when they put it up and explain why they put it up. And 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 that, I think that's a, a, a teaching opportunity. When no. you eliminate history, you are just you're you're not letting people look into Listen, why no, something no. happened. You're not eliminating history by removing a statue. I that's think you're ridiculous. Are. Nope, no, you're not. You will not see SS <laughs> statues in Germany. No, and no one's forgot about what happened. I think they've got like uh, some. You tear uh, it down and then you teach them why it was torn down. That's how yeah. you keep. These are not Rommel. Holocaust museums in the Raleigh Center Square when they put some general up that fought exactly. to keep slaves. Like, but when they put it up in 1930, I think it's a, a, a learning opportunity there. I think there's a history lesson as to, like I said, why. Years and years after the Civil War, were they still putting statues up of these people? It's a, it's it definitely it is. Done when they as said they were move, it was done to make them as heroes. That's what the again, Dixie That's again, why the Dixie whatever were created, it was created. Whatever it was at the time, it's taking the statue away isn't going to take away what was going on back then. To yes, educate people at no, what do they won't. do with those statues? Because I want one. They, they melt them down. <laughs> they're melting they them down and down making other area. stuff. They're in melting them area? down and make a George Floyd statue. Oh, in New York. In museums, they relocate them. They take them away. No, from they the don't. They said they were going to do that. Not one of them ended up in a museum. Well, they're that's literally melting them down. I mean, what you could do something with it. Then the we other thing, some. then they got, see, here's another thing. I'm pretty sure there's like busts or statues of like Erwin Rommel, you know, like the Nazi general that, that exist in museums or something like that. I doubt Probably. they have a big statue. Not Probably. in Germany. But they're never going to put up But I mean, you wouldn't want one in like Northern Africa where he was fighting, would you? Uh, like, uh, like, how do you good think? point. I, good I point. think the only good place for that would be Germany. They took a Again. statue of Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, giant statue, been there forever in front of the Museum of Natural History here in New York. It was Teddy Roosevelt on a horse, beautiful statue. He's being followed by uh, American the Indians. Slaves. Oh, that slaves. Was, yeah, yeah. American Indians uh, who were with him and some uh, African Americans that were with him. Uh, and it, it was portrayed, it was, uh, uh, they said it looks like they're being subservient. Well, yep. they were. 
it was that was the time. But to take away a statue like that, that happened. That stuff happened. It well, isn't like look no one looks and goes, God, we should do that now. I'd love to be up on a big horse with some Indians and black people behind me, uh, making sure I have my supplies and everything. Again, no the one's saying Americans. that. There's a no lot of there's a lot of people who say that actually. I don't think there are. And I they're think Trump people supporters. said Teddy Roosevelt was uh, a crazy. Trump supporters can't ride horses. Was was uh, like a, a <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt maybe a mule. Loved the American <laughs> outdoors. He, he had so much to do with our. See, that's what I'm parts. saying. You're trying to find the good points about the guy. No, and Teddy Roosevelt was pretty fucking good. He was okay. a good guy. And and again, uh, the national parks uh, uh, of of this country, Yellowstone. All these places. He fought that the Mexicans. He did, he did fight the Mexicans <laughs> and uh, San Juan Hill in Cuba. He fought the Spanish Nazi dresser. Too. Yep. Yeah, it's, <laughs> listen, I've been. I've my ex is Italian, and uh, you won't see any Mussolini. <laughs> you won't see any Mussolini statues in Italy. Well, he Il sucked. Il, Il Duce. He lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a piece of shit. He was a. Uh, such they a, all uh, were. Hitler. Wannabe. I looked up the, <laughs> where the statue is now, and I feel like Anthony was right. I just want to call. It. So I was thinking of Silent <laughs> Sam. He was a Confederate statue in New Silent Sam. Campus. I remember summer of, summer of uh, nineteen seventy seven, New York City. I don't know this, but in nineteen, um, son, of, son of Sam. Sorry. That was a completely <laughs> different thing, bro. Uh, anyway, that was a statue with major news around here. He was I on the UNC a campus. Flop. <laughs> and uh, he got toppled in 2018, and now he's hidden in some storage location that they don't advertise because yeah. everyone was trying to wreck that statue. They actually had cops stationed around this Confederate statue 24 hours a day to protect it from all the people who hated it. Oh, wow. Yeah, but they yeah, got yeah. outnumbered, and they toppled it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And for I instance, mean, like here, yeah. like for instance, here in Toronto, we're actually changing one of the names of the university who is named after a bad guy and there's no problem no, what kind no of bad one's guy? got a problem with it sorry what kind of bad guy um essentially he just uh destroyed a lot of uh native canadians oh see again with yeah. the natives i'm yeah uh, the other uh, side uh, of that uh, uh, so what i'm saying is, what i'm saying is we're changing actual names of streets and taking down statues and changing school university strange. names Scrubbing and history, people yeah. are not trying to fight it because we understand but it's that rubbing. you People don't are trying to fight it. That's not, they're not being you, given any equating. time to give. They're not being given any time to give their opinions because they're instantly looked at and and tagged with the big scarlet letter R for racist. As That's so how it should people be. are petrified. I don't think so. I think it's a scrubbing of history, and. Um, Scrubbing, I don't no, know. No, scrubbing of history is book burning, and that's what a certain party loves. We to see do. that too. So I don't did, know. Did you see the, I, I've talked about Tom it here Sawyer. Before. Did, did you I've see seen that um, one burnt? You've got to see the video of the school Babies board meeting. Racist. There's a school board meeting in Georgia, and I'm they uh, one of the parents starts reading one of the books that they take issue with. Aloud, yes. And, yes. And they stop her. They're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, yes. ma'am! There are children watching this live stream." She's like. Do you see that you just made my point? I'm reading yeah, a book yeah. from the library uh -huh. where our children go to school. And, uh -huh. and you, madam, think it's too racy to be read aloud in these chambers. It's like, come on. And it was yeah, pretty yeah. dirty. I, I, you know, like, like I was getting off. on one hand. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it was pretty hot. <laughs> but on one hand, like, like, I'm, you know, high schools are, are getting late. They're fucking each other. It's like, like, yeah, like it's they all have cell phones, right? Like, like they've seen some shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't Everything. know what it's like to grow up in high school with a cell phone, right? Like, like, like it was a little. I would have imagine? porn during biology class, and I'd oh pass my all my God. tests. And yeah. then you pass because you know everything. So maybe a dirty book. Like, 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 as long as that book is isn't like in like I don't know, like, like, like fifth grade room or something like that. Like, like, it seems fine. That's the thing. I thought it was a high school library. It seems. It, it would seem to me like it's okay for high school. Um, although you would imagine. That the audience yeah. would be high school kids. I don't know if I can know. When I was a kid, finding a Playboy was like finding the Holy Grail. Oh, it's gold. A whole oh, game. no. See, Just that's golden. I'm My telling you, right? Right? Oh, like, I'm telling you. It bro. depends on the uh, fetish of the guy you took him from, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You find him like in a stack in a garbage. You'd just be oh, walking down the street bro. and you'd see like a tit in the garbage. <laughs> and go, what? And then you'd find him and be like, 
I just struck gold. Yes. This is a neighborhood gold. Rabbit, hero. Go, in, go into the woods and stash it under leaves. <laughs> tell <laughs> your friends. You'll yep. be going, oh, motherfucker. Yeah, it I was have... the greatest thing. Now, it was. it's like, eh. <laughs> anything, anything you want is exactly. available, dude. This and is my Playboy story. I don't know how I never good that is, but... yeah. So I had, I had like a couple of Playboys. There were like, like Anthony said, there was a stack of like forty, oh. and I grabbed two, and my friends grabbed two. We divide them up. I right, cool. And then, no, so I have like two Playboys that are in my possession that I store between my mattress and my box spring, and that's that. And I owned them for a while, and all I did was look at the pictures. I was young. I hadn't discovered masturbation or anything like that. I, I had a friend. I was going to say, what, you didn't read the uh, interview with Jimmy <laughs> Carter? <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't read the articles yet. My friend is two years older, and he says, what do you do with the magazines? And I'm like, do oh. with them? Like, what? What is there to do with a magazine <laughs> other than look at it? Like, oh, I, I just no, do what oh, you do. No, this so good. he describes this self-sex act where he wraps the magazine into a tube and, like, fucks a paper magazine. So no, I'm like, it's the whole purpose. Well, I got to try this. <laughs> 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 and I do. And it's not hot at all. Like, the, the edges are sharp. Not, yes, it's, that you can't. Oh, that the magazine like that. is deadly. <laughs> yeah, and, the, the and magazine you can't look at the magazine while you're doing that magazine like you know so i tried like like yeah but you need two magazines mag, one but, look at <laughs> one to do wrap what up i with. thought it would and uh and yeah oh. so i didn't do that anymore